Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming to our press conference. Uh, it's about concerns the saving of a, of a marine animal known as the dugong. And if I have to confess, before I came here, I didn't know what a dugong was. Then they explained to me that it was like a manatee, which is a creature that I'm familiar with because it lives in Florida, where I used to visit my parents. So we have two speakers here. <coughs> uh, Mr. Peter Galvin will be speaking, and also Mr. Yoshi Kawazu Makishi. Both are, are plaintiffs in, the, in, a, in an environmental lawsuit for, on behalf of the Bi Center for Biological Diversity. And we have a few other people. Mr. Galvin will probably introduce them at, before he starts his speech. And you're welcome to ask, the, ask questions of uh, the guests as, as well as uh, the speakers. So without anything more ado, I give you Mr. Galvin. <coughs> Well, thanks for the opportunity to address the Correspondence Club. We appreciate it. Um, we've, uh, I'm Peter Galvin with the Center for Biological Diversity. Um, we have uh, recently returned from a delegation visit to Okinawa with several members of the Center for Biological Diversity, or CBD. And I'd like to introduce a couple of the uh, members who have relevant, particularly relevant information as we get into the question and answer session. Again, feel free to direct the questions either at me them or I may direct some technical aspects uh, of a few questions to them. We have uh, Brendan Cummings, who is the lead attorney at the Center for Biological Diversity and has worked on this case with me since 2003. Thank you. We have Miyoko Sakashta, our Oceans Program Director. And we have Mati Waya, who is a uh, director of CBD and the head of the Wishtoyo Foundation, a member of the Chumash Native American tribe and an important cultural uh, and environmental leader in the United States. Um, we've returned, uh, just returned from Okinawa uh, and have uh, from a week long uh, visit there to visit Hinoko Bay, Ora Bay, and to meet with our local partners um, in Okinawa NGOs and to investigate uh, the preliminary construction activities at Camp Schwab uh, at Hinoko. And we're very disturbed, very disturbed by what we've seen and more committed than ever to to uh, fight to protect the dugong and this uh, important cultural uh, and a, a cultural monument and desperately endangered species. Uh, could, I, could I just? Please. I forgot to introduce another person, uh, Mr. Yoshikazu Makishi, who is, uh, did I? Oh, I got the wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Uh, yeah, no, Mr. Yoshikawa, he did, right, who right. is going to be uh, a translation and may uh, may deliver some part of the uh, some ideas of his own. So right. I'm sorry. Thanks. Uh, the CBD has been working to protect uh, the Okinawa dugong since 2003. Um, we've been working with some very dedicated Okinawan partners and, and people from mainland Japan with the Japan Environmental Lawyers Federation and other organizations. The Okinawa dugong is down to its a very desperate level. Uh, it's unknown what the current numbers are, but they, they number in, in at most several dozen, possibly far less. Some of the last remaining habitat for the dugong is just offshore of Hinoko Bay in the seagrass beds. And what we've seen uh, in our visit is the preliminary construction activities, uh, seawall activities, uh, ropes that are actually uh, around the Hinoko and Ora Bay, uh, ostensibly to keep protesters out, but having the effect of actually keeping the dugongs out as well. And we recently, just hours ago, met with the uh, Ministry of, of Defense and Cultural Affairs and the Environment and asked them about the, uh, uh, their conclusion that they didn't think their project was going to impact the dugong. Uh, and one of the things that was really amazing to us is that the dugong feeding trenches, they eat almost entirely seagrass, uh, basically they do eat entirely seagrass. The feeding trenches or the, 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 the troughs of uh, where they, they feed, and you can see the uh, trails when they're, when they're uh, done feeding, um, 
they found 130 of these trails in the Hinoko Bay area. And this is well researched. The Nature Conservation Society of Japan has done long-term research in the area and consistently found that this area is the, some of the best remaining dugong habitat left in Okinawa. And so the conclusion that the Japanese government made uh, that the project uh, wouldn't have impacts on the dugong is, is, is simply uh, contradicted by all of the scientific information that, that exists. And for us, this is a concern because as a U.S. NGO, we're dealing with the U.S. government and under U.S. law, and yet the uh, United States Department of Defense is basing its findings on the government of Japan's environmental impact assessment. And so, uh, we're, you know, we've, we've recently won, and many of you may be aware, an important ruling from the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals in the United States, uh, reviving our lawsuit and bringing it to trial next May. And we feel confident that when the merits of the case are heard, when the court looks at the facts of the situation, they're going to find uh, what all of our experts have found, which is that filling in the sea area, uh, filling in parts of Hanoko and Ora Bay will have a devastating impact on the dugong. And not only is this uh, an endangered species, a desperately endangered species, but this is a protected cultural monument under Japan law. The Cultural Properties Protection Law lists the dugong as a, a protected cultural monument. And the US NHPA, National Historic Preservation Act, specifically says that the US will protect the, the cultural monuments of the host nation, in this case, the host nation being Japan. And as Americans, we're appalled that our government would take actions that would exterminate, actually be the final death blow for this protected cultural monument. Now, it's the case that the dugong has had uh, a variety of threats over the years and is, is, is much less abundant than it once was for a variety of reasons, not all of which relate to the US military by any means. However, at this point, we're down to such a low population that any further impacts to the remaining habitat, to the remaining individual dugongs, are likely to be the death sentence for this creature. And uh, through this time, working on this issue since 2003, uh, we've had a chance to talk to a lot of people, read a lot of materials uh, about the relationship of the Okinawa dugong to the Okinawan culture, to the Ryukan culture. And this, uh, this animal has been a revered, sacred creature for hundreds and hundreds of years, maybe even thousands. There's all kinds of, of evidence of uh, dugong uh, art, dugong uh, stories, songs. Um, dugong materials made from dugongs from hundreds of years ago. In fact, uh, it was believed that uh, dugongs were, and dugong uh, art made from dugongs was presented to the, the royal family as a, a highest order tribute. And so we can see that this important animal is woven into the culture of Okinawa in a very deep way. And it's just, it's, 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 it not only is it illegal, it's just morally wrong for our country to solve, uh, try and, and, and address, um, issues, uh, issues in this manner in a way that ultimately is going to lead to a fraying of the friendship between the two countries. Because if at the end of the day, the United States destroys the protected cultural monument of the people of Okinawa and, and exterminates uh, a, a protected cultural monument, what kind of message will that send for the, the, the friendship between the two countries? And so while uh, many people are focused on, on, on important short uh, and medium term issues that can't be ignored, the reality is the solution to the problem can never be destroying the protected cultural monument of a partner. And that's what's happening here. And so we're working for the dugong, we're working with our partners and friends in Okinawa, but we're also working for the long-term friendship 
uh, of, 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 of the two countries. And we feel ultimately that history will judge uh, the Department of Defense and the Ministry of, of uh, Defense's actions very poorly uh, because in essence they've tried to sweep under the rug uh, the impacts. One of the things we learned uh, today, well, we, we've learned this before but it was reiterated today, is as I mentioned the US government is basing its findings on the Japanese government's studies. The Japanese government environmental impact assessment actually refused to even disclose the names of the experts that they relied on to come to the conclusion that the project wouldn't impact the dugong. First of all, the, the conclusion is absurd. There's, this is the, some of the last remaining habitat. Dugongs are known to occur in the area up until the time the construction begins. Today we heard the Ministry of Defense say, well, they haven't seen a dugong. Uh, in, in a couple years there. But that timing exactly coincides with the beginning of preliminary construction activities. So it, 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 it's biologically the position is untenable. The good news here is that we are going to be heard in court. We are moving back, to, we're moving to trial in May. Our experts are going to be gathering information, coming over here, gathering uh, more biological information. And we're confident that we're going to be able to win in court and ultimately confident even in this beginning of the ninth inning. We are confident we will prevail and ultimately we will be able to protect the Okinawa dugong with the very brave uh, partners who are leading the, this charge, leading this effort uh, in Okinawa. And what we saw and heard in Okinawa this week left us more determined than ever to work for the protection of the Okinawa dugong for this important cultural monument and this desperately endangered species. Uh, our next speaker, please. Yoshikazu Makishi. I'm Yoshikazu Makishi, and uh, uh, Mr. Yoshikawa, it's me, uh, will be translating. The Otashino Hoa, Kono, Jugon Sosho, no, Haike, Niaru, Okinawa, no, Begun Kichimon Daikara, and Hanashio Stekimas. I just like to mention the, give you the background of this. Uh, Okinawa situation with regard to U.S. military bases and uh, also the background for the uh, Dugong lawsuits. This is the photo of the Futenma Air Base, uh, U.S. Marine uh, Air Base. As you can see, around the uh, Futenma Air Base, uh, there are houses of people. で、この普天間飛行場のこの場所を沖縄の人たちに返すから、その代わりに辺野古の海を埋めて飛行場を作ると、そういう計画になってます。So the plan by the both Japanese and US government is that they will close the Futenma Air Base in exchange for a new base being built in the Henoko Ura Bay in the picture. As you can see, this uh, the orange colored play, uh, area, that would be the military base. And this is the area, it's called Ora Bay, and then as uh, the Dugon's feeding trails has been found in this area. The Futenma Air Base, Marine Base, was constructed by the U.S. military who landed during the World War II in 1945. 米軍がブルトーザーでここに住んでた人たちの住宅や畑や学校などを潰している写真です。This is the photos that show in the during the uh the the towards the end of the war 
the U.S. military landed there and just took over the land. And using bulldozers,、uh, they built a base. 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 And the construction took place during the period or during the time when the local、uh, landholders, local people, were put into a concentration camp. つまり米軍が沖縄の私たちの住宅や畑などを盗んで作った飛行場です。So that we could argue that U.S. military built this base by stealing、uh, our land. And our farms. 盗んだ土地を返す代わりに新しく飛行場を作るというのはとても悪い罪だと思います。So I think it's seen that U.S. military is trying to build a new base in exchange for the land which the U.S. military stole from us. でこの図は航空写真は米軍が2012年に沖縄にオスプレイという新しい飛行機を配備するにあたって作った環境レビューからのコピーです。The photo,、uh, the picture you are, you are seeing is from the、uh, environmental review, which is the environmental、uh, assessment、uh, for the deployments of the U.S. military's MV Osprey aircraft. で、米軍は AICUZ。IQ ズという飛行場の安全基準を作っています。The U.S. has the,、uh, their safe, uh, safety standards for、um, airfields and air bases. 滑走路の端からこのような台形状にクリアゾーンをという位置づけをしています。As you can see, towards the, the both ends of the、um, run, run, runway, there are two、uh, safety zones. Or clear zones. でこのクリアゾーンには住宅、学校、集会所、病院などがあってはいけないことになっています。In the clear zones,、uh, there should be no houses, no gathering places, no hospitals, or no schools. しかし、この地域には、まあ、このクリアゾーンは人々が住んでいる地域にはみ出しています。So, but in the case of Futema Air Base, as you can see, in the clear zones,、uh, there will be a, a people's houses. この沖縄の人々から盗んだ普天間飛行場を返すのは、米軍の安全基準に照らしてもまともな解決です。So, this is just a logical that U.S. military return the land of which they stole. Uh, according to this,、uh, considering the safety issues. 私たち、沖縄の人たちは、8割の人たちが辺野古に新しい、米軍のための新しい飛行場を作って提供することに反対しています。それで、アメリカの NHPA という法律を使って、このここでジュゴンの生息環境を脅かしてはいけないという訴訟をに原告として加わっています。That's why I'm, I'm participating in the lawsuits because I want you to protect the,、uh, the nature of this area. ありがとうございました。Thank you very much. Is there anybody else speaking or we go to questions now? I think so. Go to questions. questions. Go to questions, please. Thank you. We're, we're ready to open the floor to、uh, questions from anybody on the panel. Please try to address your questions to a specific、uh, speaker and、uh, leave them, <coughs> try to keep it to one question per person. That's hard for me to see sometimes with the TV cameras there. Maybe、I'd, let me ask you a question, Peter.、Uh, I, I mentioned before I'm familiar with the manatee. And, uh, at the, are these two creatures exactly the same thing?、Uh, thanks, t h e r e Dugongs and manatees are, are different. Uh, uh, dugongs, uh, they are, they're related, 
Actually, dugongs are also related to elephants, interestingly. Uh, they branch apart uh, sometime, some several hundred thousand years ago, uh, or even longer. Uh, the uh, dugong is sometimes known as the saltwater manatee. And uh, manatees um, have more uh, a, a slightly broader habitat uh, distribution. Manatees can occur in saltwater, but also in freshwater. Uh, dugongs are really uh, basically entirely saltwater uh, creatures. And uh, do, this is the Okinawa is the northernmost population of the dugong in the world, and so it's considered especially uh, ecologically important as species tend to be uh, uh, evolutionarily adapting to their environments when they're at the edge uh, of their environment. Dugongs at one time were known to have occurred further north in the uh, Japan archipelago, um, uh, substantially further north, um, but the Okinawa has become the last stronghold of the, the dugong in Japan, and Okinawa dugongs are, are considered to be a, a separate, uh, a distinct uh, stock or, or population uh, of dugongs, although it's unknown, it's actually unknown whether they're a separate subspecies or not. That's never been established one way or the other, though uh, it's, it's believed that they're entirely isolated from other dugongs and have been for some time. And uh, as I mentioned, down to a perilously no low number, uh, and scientists from around the world, the IUCN, uh, has uh, called for the protection of the Okinawa dugong and pointed out uh, their desperately endangered status, uh, and so have a number of other scientific organizations, and they're highly recognized to be among the most imperiled uh, of all the dugong uh, populations worldwide. Did I hear a question over here? Ah, yes. Now, I can, sorry, I don't see too well against the TV lights. Eto, Asahi Shinbun no yatsu to imasu. Ah, ano, sumasen. Translate shite itte daite mo ii desu. Ah, do you have to? Okay. Right. I'm a uh, Yats from the Asahi newspaper. Sumimasen, ano, Nihongo de sumon sashite itadakimasu. Ah, uh, ask in Japanese. Ano, soshou nitsuite skoshi oshite kudasai. Eh, sai, dozo. Okay, uh, could you um, elaborate more uh, on the, uh, the lawsuit itself? Sakiodo, tabun, zero, sanden kara soshou datta to yufuni oshatte mashita. Watashi mo okina ni kimu shita koto garanzuka, sono koro kara, nano, nagai soshou nano de, shikamo, Amerika no holi tseido ga skoshi, Nihon to chigao no de, so as you said, it's it's been a uh, while since the uh, the litigation was first initiated uh, in 2003, and uh, I was in Okinawa uh, at that time. So it's been a long time, and there are some new developments that are going on. So could you elaborate? Uh, yeah. So the most recent development was in August, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals overturned a lower court decision that had uh, dismissed our lawsuit. And uh, as you may remember, the suit was filed in 2003. We won important rulings in the case in 2005 and in 2008. And uh, this is the first, uh, first lawsuit of its kind to uh, seek to apply the National Historic Preservation Act to a US action overseas. And so uh, the, when the World Heritage Convention uh, was passed and the US became a signatory to it in the late 70s, uh, shortly thereafter, the NHPA was amended to include an international provision. And so this law, lawsuit is the first lawsuit uh, under that provision. In 2005 and eight, the court ruled it did apply overseas. At, uh, in the years subsequent to that, um, at some point we believed the project had been put on hold. Uh, there was a uh, change of government in Japan. They announced the project was not moving forward. Uh, we were very happy about this. Uh, at some point after that, uh, the situation changed again. The plan became back, on, back online, and as a result, we revived our lawsuit again. And so in uh, 2015, uh, a, uh, the original judge we had had uh, retired, a different judge was assigned. 
This judge ruled that uh, what's called the political question uh, prevented uh, our case from ever being heard on the merits. And this political question is, uh, addresses uh, the uh, ability to interact with uh, a foreign policy issue, and that's what the government was asserting, the two governments were asserting that our lawsuit was trying to do. And of course, that's not what our lawsuit is trying to do. Our lawsuit is trying to get the US Department of Defense to comply with US law and not drive a cultural monument into extermination or extinction. And so the, fortunately, the appeals court saw that distinction and saw that our, our claims were, were warranted to proceed to trial. And so at this point, uh, August, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals rules that the, the case is back on track, that they revived the suit, it, it's going to trial in May. Between now and May, a series of things will occur, uh, including uh, the U.S. government will what's called uh, uh, create, uh, s provide the record, and this is very important because the, the, the administrative record uh, is the, the, in theory, the sum total of documents that the government relied on to make its decision. And uh, we have an, an opportunity to question the record, to determine whether we believe the record is all of the documents that should be relevant. Uh, and this is gonna uh, shine a bright light on how this process occurred. So between now and May, a series of intermediate steps will occur with the government providing documents and information, us having the ability to challenge whether that information is sufficient or demand uh, more information, uh, potentially even uh, interviewing uh, government uh, officials to determine how they, more specifically, how they came uh, to their decisions. And uh, in May, currently scheduled in May, the. Uh, oral argument or trial uh, will be held on the, the papers that have been submitted up until that, that time. And we're uh, in cautiously optimistic because on the substance of the issue, is the dugong a protected cultural monument? Yes. Is the dugong endangered? Yes. Is one of the last known areas of the dugong in Hinoko Bay? Yes. Will the project negatively impact the dugong? Well, from all of the experts we've consulted with, some of the leading dugong experts in the world and marine mammal specialists in the world, it's an absurd conclusion to state that filling in a massive area of ocean where a marine mammal lives won't have an impact. And so uh, the specifics are that the uh, the schedule, um, and I can, I can provide some, some further details on exact dates of motions and counter motions, if, if you wish, uh, all leading up to a currently scheduled uh, hearing on May 24th at the Federal District Court in San Francisco. And so obviously there's a lot of work to be done between now and then, um, and we are working with our Okinawan partners and uh, three of the uh, three of the individual of the seven plaintiffs are Okinawan individuals. Uh, another is the Japan Environmental Lawyers Federation, who has worked closely with us on this case over the years. And so we're all uh, gathering uh, information, uh, and it's it's uh, we're we're alarmed at what's happening in Hoka, Hanoka Bay, but also excited that, that finally the merits of the case will be heard in court. And one of the significant things about this is the US government has gone to great lengths of, of the Department of Defense to avoid direct communication with, with Okinawan individuals, instead asserting that uh, the policy of the Department of Defense is only to have government-to-government -government communications. And, uh, that the National Historic Preservation Act specifically says that the government agencies that are carrying out a project have to consult with the affected parties. And in this case, the affected parties uh, are Okinawan people with knowledge and relationships to the Okinawa dugong. So we have elders, we have uh, people, uh, cultural experts, we have fishermen, who have had a relationship with the dugong. And, uh, and so ultimately, the significance of this, and, and we, I can't understate the importance of this, the DOD 
has never had to actually sit down with the Okinawan people, look them in the eye, and explain what the project will do to the, cult, the protected cultural monument. And by a series of, uh, in, in, in English we call it a shell game, a shell game where the, you're hiding, trying to hide the shell by moving it around very quickly. And this is the essence of how this process has occurred. Each person is pointing their finger at another person, saying, well, they've conducted the analysis and we're relying on them. And ultimately, what we find out is that the people that the, the government of Japan has relied on to make the no impact determination, uh, they won't just divulge publicly. And, and ultimately, if the US government is gonna try to rely on the Japanese environmental impact assessment, they're gonna have to disclose how they came to the conclusion of no impact. And that's by definition going to have to disclose the methodology, the qualifications, the identities uh, of, of the researchers who, who they're relying on the conclusions. And based on our knowledge of, of Dugong and Serenian science, the, 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 the family w by which they belong to, uh, they're gonna have a hard time uh, having that finding stand up to scientific scrutiny. This is the essence of peer review, where a scientist publishes their findings and other people in the scientific community are able to evaluate the methodology and findings and have a debate. This is the scientific inquiry and the environmental impact uh, assessment um, it, in the US uh, in particular is supposed to follow from this scientific methodology. And while uh, the laws of the two countries uh, are different in different regards. In this case, because it's a US military base that is being constructed, and the US has an obligation under US law, it's not good enough for the Department of Defense to rely on the EIA process um, and assert that the process is complete. And so, basically, uh, in the uh, earlier round of this litigation, one of the things that the DOD had said is, the first thing they said was the law doesn't apply overseas. Well, it turns out it does apply overseas. Then they said, well, Japan has a very complicated cultural properties protection system. Uh, it's, it's too complicated for us to understand, and there are uh, a variety of protected cultural objects. If the DOD has to begin uh, figuring out how not to destroy cultural property in Japan, where will it begin and where will it end? The court rejected that too. They said, this isn't that complicated. There's a list. You have the list. You know what you're doing. You know what's on the list. Figure out how this is going to impact it. So that was rejected. The next finding, so you can see that they've always tried to avoid the merits. What's actually the impact, right? Always hoping. The next thing they said is, well, we can't allow the case to go to trial because it interferes with uh, foreign policy and political questions. That was rejected too. So now we finally, after all these years, get to the actual merits, the scientific, biological, cultural merits of the case. And that's where we feel confident that when we actually get to trial on this, that the, the fallacy, uh, the, the, you know, the, the basic science that has tried to be ignored uh, will be overcome. And at the end of the day, we believe we can stop the, 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 uh, th that the findings of the court will ultimately change the uh, situation on the ground. And we feel ultimately that, that uh, it's very... You may want to get another question. Oh, yeah. But it's, 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 in, it's important that uh, the, the DOD have to disclose. There's, the DOD has to disclose the impact, and they have to be meet with Okinawan people, and that has to be a transparent process. Do we have another question? I got it. There you are. Yes, sir. Uh, so is it member of Why don't you talk to the microphone? え、終戦の時から今まで沖縄の人が何人ぐらい沖縄を守るために入ってる米軍の犠牲になってますか。それの数と呪言とどれぐらい関係にありますか。もう一度前前の質問。え、最初の質問はあの沖縄占領軍が
問題になっているジュゴンの数とどんなどれぐらいのバランスであるのかちょっと知りたい。So this、uh, question is directed to、uh, Mr. Makisi. So、um, looking at the, if you can give us numbers, the number of the people who are killed by、uh, U.S. military uh, occupation, uh, U.S. Mil uh, uh, U.S. military during the occupation, also the number of the Dugons、uh, today surviving.、Uh, What are these numbers, and、uh, what do you make of this? What do you make of this? ありがとうございます。えー、沖縄戦の後に米軍によってどれだけの人がまあレイプされたり殺されたりしたかというその数字について私は詳しく把握しておりません。それから。Okay. Uh, first,、uh, with regard to the、uh, actual number of the people who have been raped or murdered、uh, after the war by the、uh, U.S. occupation force, forces, I, I don't know. The Jugon no Kazu ni Sijite desu ga, Nihon Seifu ga Chosa o Hajimeta koro ni Jugon ga iru tiu no ga wakatte, so shite sono koro ni Suikei sare te ita no wa. 多くても50頭ではないかというふうに学者たちは打っておりました。で現在、えー、日本政府によって個体識別されているまあジュゴン A、ジュゴン B、ジュゴン C と呼んでいる個体識別されているのが3頭であります。でご質問の趣旨はあのまあわずか数頭のジュゴンのために。普天間基地をそのまま固定化するのかということをおっしゃりたいんでしょうか。Okay. 私はジュボンよりも人の命を軽く見てる日本の政府をびっくりしてると思って。そもそも訳しないといけない。はい So,、uh, with regard to the number of dugons,、um, when the Japanese government first started uh, uh, doing the surveys,、uh, they estimated、uh, at most like a 50, around 50 dugons、uh, living in, around Okinawa. Then, most recently, the Japanese government survey、uh, estimates that、uh, they have like、uh, very few.、Uh, they, they have identified、uh, three specific dugons, dugon A, B, C, they named. であの日本政府が人命を無視しているというご趣旨の質問ということでしたので、そこについてちょっとこちらから補足的にお,くあのお,くお答えします。So your questions、uh, relate to or refer to the, your, your assertion that the Japanese government is uh, uh, taking light of the,、uh, the lives of the actual people. このクリアゾーン問題についてですが、国会議員、沖縄選出の国会議員が二度にわたって文書で日本政府に回答を求めています。So elected officials,、uh, national diet members、uh, from、uh, elected from Okinawa,、uh, they have asked the Japanese government twice、uh, the questions with regard to these this,、uh, clear zones in the Futenma、uh, air base. 質問の内容は大きく整理すると二点です。Uh, there were two、uh, main points in these questions. The first question is that、uh, is there any、um, uh, safety regulations applied to the Futenma air base,、uh, the air bases? Uh, air base. And if it's actually applied, these regulations are applied, what would happen? So, but this is what、uh, Japanese government responded. Uh, first, they say they, the Japanese government they recognize that there are、uh, safety regulations applied to air bases. But,、um, second question with regard to the second questions、uh, because, this, uh, because there is a 
this is a relationship as concern between the U.S. Uh, government and Japanese government. We cannot answer to that question, give answer to that question. しかも米軍自身の安全基準に合わないわけだから無条件に沖縄の人たちに返すべきであって辺野古に代わりを作るというのはおかしなことです。as I said before, uh, the Futama Air Base is built on the land that the U.S. military took away from Okinawan people. And then now they're saying that they will build the uh, new base in Henoko Ora Bay, then they could return the Futama Air Base. Uh, that's, a very, that's nonsense. Can I say one thing? My response to that I, I totally agree. What do you think to that? What do you say to that, to what Mr. Makishi just said? Well, uh, solving one problem by creating, solving one untenable situation by creating another one is not a, a good solution. And we've heard again and again uh, that there is no alternative. But there, there of course there is, and uh, again, the idea that ultimately, uh, you know, my expertise is not these issues. My expertise is the environment and wildlife. And so uh, what we do know is that if uh, long term, uh, if the U.S. is to, uh, if the U.S. ends up destroying the, cult the protected cultural monument by filling in Ora Bay and Hanoko Bay, one injustice will be multiplied with another injustice. And that ultimately is not the solution, can't be the solution to any problem. Um, one of the things I'd like to do is, um, a few people who came with us on this delegation, I uh, thought it was important for uh, the Okinawan people to meet some, in, uh, some of the indigenous leaders from the United States because one of the things that we see is that the struggle uh, for the Okinawan people is very similar to other indigenous struggles around the world. And so I'd like to actually ask Mati Waya, a Chumash ceremonial leader, uh, to, say, to come up and say a few words about his impressions about what he's seen, what he's learned, and his thoughts on, on these issues. Haku, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to give my respects to the ancestors of Okinawa. We visited with the peaceful protesters and we witnessed an aggressive way of silencing the original people. We have faced in the Americas challenges to protect our cultural resource. And those cultural resources is what creates the tradition of thousands of years of history and of living in one place where they're sustaining their lives. After our meeting today, I was a little bit disappointed that the Okinawan people's voices have been silenced. We need to recognize the dugong as the child of Okinawa and the future of a people. These negotiations are going on with Japanese uh, country that is supposed to be representing the Okinawan people. And only the Okinawan people can represent who they are, where they come from, their story, their history, and where they're going as a cultural people. <laughs> Me being of a First Nation cultural people, it's important to us that we have a say in the way we affect a place, a coast. We took a ride on the bay in Hinako, and we saw the sea turtles and the snakes and the coral reefs and where the dugan feeds, where the people's prayers and tears now have come to try to help the dugan. 
The elders that have sat there and, and fought this for t over 20 years have been ignored. We have a law in the United States, the Historic Preservation Law. We can't allow Japan to let them get away with breaking the law. We have to abide by the law. We all have to live together in the choices that we make. And I am grateful for CBD for all the work that they have done to challenge the US government of the impact that they've made on a First Nation people, an original people that have lived there for thousands of years. And I am grateful for all the work that the panel here has given their time and their life to protect something that we one day will look back and be so proud of the work that you have done. And for that, I want to thank you for all that you, you stand for and, and what you bring to protect the dugong. We have about five or 10 minutes left of a, a lot of time. Is there another question, a last question? Yes, sir. すみません。えっと、日本語でよしかさんより通訳お願いいたします。TBS so this, uh, the, my question is uh, directed to both of you. Uh, the Japanese government insists the Henoko solution is the only solution. So what is your reaction or what is your take on this uh, Japanese government insisting on this? <coughs> uh, 私の方から先に答えます。あの、辺野古の海を埋めて3000メートルの滑走路を日本作るという計画はベトナム戦争の頃の1966年にスタートしています。So uh, runways, two runways in Henoko Oura Bay by landfilling. Fukai Oura Wan Niwa Enterprise Q no Koku Bokan or Setsugan de Kiru Gunko Tsukuru Keka Mo Dakia was a dash. And in that particular plan also has the dimensions of uh, building uh, seaports that can uh, have, would have the, uh, the ships, the uh, class of enterprise can dock on the dock on that the harbor. しかしこの計画はアメリカの国会でベトナム戦争で金を使いすぎているからこの建設の軍事費は回せないということで保護になりました。However, the U.S. Congress uh, denied that the plan because the, it's the U.S. government spent already a lot of money on the Vietnam War. で今米軍は日本政府が so the present situation of the present plan is building two runways uh, with also the function of a, a, a seaport as well. So and then the Japanese government is paying for the, all the building cost. で、日本政府が唯一の解決策だと言っていますが、アメリカ政府、アメリカ軍が普天間を無条件返還すれば唯一の解決策でも何でもなく家に書いた文字で終わりますから、そのように運動を進めたいと思います。
although the Japanese government just insists that the uh, Yanoko is the only solution, but if you can close the Ftemar air station, uh, air base, uh, without any conditions, uh, then the, this Hinoko plan will be, in, uh, will be uh, gone very soon. We think we really need to emphasize that Ftema air station will be closed, has to be closed, because it's violate all the safety measures or safety standards. So the, the assertion that there's no alternative is one that has been explored over the years. Uh, for example, the uh, US General Accounting Office, GAO, did a report in the late 90s addressing this issue and actually looked at uh, a variety of possibilities, um, all of which would uh, themselves likely uh, create controversy within Okinawa. However, at that time, they actually concluded that the essential functions of Futenma uh, could probably be combined with some of the other existing facilities there to accomplish the solution without building the base in Hanoko. And uh, that, uh, you know, there was even a, a senator in the US, who, uh, James Webb, who actually had uh, so much concerns about this that put expenditure limitations on the US DOD on this project for a number of years while he was serving in the Senate. Um, so if you look at the history of this issue, uh, you can see that it's, the, it's not the only solution. It's the solution that uh, is the, the, the simplest solution they've come up with is to fill in an area of the ocean because it has less impact on the uh, uh, immediate uh, residents of a crowded urban area. And so they've looked at alternatives. They concluded alternatives were viable, uh, potentially viable to explore at least. One of the limitations was at that time, uh, the, the US military responded and said that uh, this would require, actually have required combining different branches of the US military on the same facility. And the individual branches of the military didn't like that idea because each has their own chain of command and each would prefer uh, their own separate base from the other. But of course this, you know, when you look at, at that, that's a, a not a great answer, uh, first of all. Second of all, while I said before, I'm not a security expert, I'm an environmental expert and a wildlife expert. But I can say, having uh, been a, a student of this issue for some time and, and seen uh, uh, these, these issues play out over time, that if the US builds the base, if, if, if this base is built in Hinoko Bay, and the bitterness of the destruction of the ocean and the bitterness of the destruction of the protected cultural monument comes to pass in the manner that we think it would, ultimately, while uh, this may save face for a few years in these, this geopolitical chess game that Okinawa is trapped in, this may save face for a few years, but in the long run, it's going to be a disaster for the relationship, not only a disaster for the dugong, not only a disaster for cultural protection, but ultimately a disaster for the long-term security relationship of the two countries. Because these, this, these bitter feelings can persist for decades or even centuries. And as I said before, Solving one injustice by creating another injustice isn't going to solve the problem. It's just kicking the can down the road for just a few more years. And we need to realize that the, the cultural protection, the, the cultural lineage, the, the history, the stories, uh, the integrity of of the culture is, has to be seen as just as important as any other factor. And I would submit that it's a lack of will, a lack of creativity, and a lack of courage 
that causes someone to say there's no alternative. It's someone, it's, it's, it's the answer, uh, it's the answer that, that, that oppressed people have heard for a long time. There's no alternative, we need you to take a hit for the team. But you know what? When we've seen this in all kinds of, of documents, even, even uh, security analyses, even security specialists, they look at this and realize that the, the participation and the, the, the cooperation of the host nation and people within the host nation is actually critical to the long-term functioning of any relationship. So while Washington may have the power to force Tokyo to build the base in Hinoko Bay, Washington and Tokyo don't have the power to control the feelings of the people in Okinawa. And ultimately, the reason cultural protection laws are enacted are because the objects and the monuments of, of a country are, 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 are sacred to that country. And would, I mean, we can all agree that the US wouldn't ask Italy to destroy the, the Sistine Chapel. We can all agree that we wouldn't ask France to dismantle the Louvre. Why is it so difficult to take it in a different context, in a different place, and understand the importance of abiding by a host nation's cultural protection law? And in this case, of course, it's complicated by the fact that both Washington and Tokyo are working hand in hand to bulldoze Ora Bay and bulldoze the protected cultural monument. So uh, we don't accept the answer that there's no alternative, even if it is a complex situation. We've uh, come out of our allotted time, so we'll bring this press conference to a close and thank our speakers for appearing with us. You told me they have some in Australia? Yeah. Is that, if, if the Okinawa duong is finished, would that be a last redoubt for the, for the duong, Pacific duong? Well, uh, dugongs are uh, the stronghold, the remaining stronghold of dugongs in the world is the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. Uh, the most populous uh, number is left there. Although we're starting to see some severe threats from climate change. Uh, and the Great Barrier Reef itself is seriously in trouble, and scientists are, are alarmed about the, de the uh, decline of this ecosystem. And so it is true that the great, right now Australia is the, 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 uh, the last most important stronghold of, of the dugong. Uh, dugongs are in trouble worldwide, and the Okinawa dugong, uh, again, is a separate stock. It's unknown whether it's a separate subspecies. I think eventually they may do enough genetic research to figure that out. Uh, but dugongs worldwide are in trouble and this is the northernmost population and it's ecologically considered a very, very important one and not one that losing, we should lo uh, take lightly to lose. All right, I think we better... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.